It's a sporting tradition unlike any other in Western Canada. For more than half a century, the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament has been a premier showcase of top local, national and international basketball talent. The legacy continues in 2020 with Brit 52. This year, 12 high school teams from across Canada compete to add their names to the trophy. Stay tuned for the third place and championship games right now, only on Shaw Spotlight. From Kelly Bowers Gymnasium inside Bedford Road Collegiate, Brit Basketball is on Shaw Spotlight. Good evening, everybody from Bedford Road Collegiate. I'm Simon Hyatt, joined as always by Scott Hall. You got another great doubleheader of Brit Basketball heading your way. Just about an hour and a half. Should be an interesting matchup in the championship game, Scott. We've got a bit of an upstart team from small town, southern Alberta, the Raymond Comets, coming from a town of about 3,000 people. They're playing on championship Saturday night, and they'll be taking on a team that's probably the most successful team in Brit history, multiple championship winner Hansworth from North Vancouver. That's an interesting matchup. Yeah, it's almost like out of Hoosiers, right? Exactly. The big city Indianapolis High School and the tiny little rural school. But, you know, that, that uh, team from Alberta, they play like they've been playing together their whole lives yeah. because they probably have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They are a lot of fun to watch. That's the championship matchup. Coming up first, of course, we've got the third place matchup. And this one features a couple of teams that might have expected to be in the championship game. A couple of teams that are traditionally very good. One of the best teams in Saskatchewan against one of the best teams in Alberta. It's Dr. Martin Laboldis out of Regina and Sir Winston Churchill out of Calgary. Perhaps a couple of teams that are a little disappointed to be in the third place game, but these are two very good games, at least historically, even if they're maybe not quite as good as they have been in the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. In a game like this, it might be the team that's able to bounce back off the disappointment of not being in the final that's able to get it done for third place. Doubleheader Brit Basketball coming your way live next on Shaw Spotlight. Just about ready to tip things off in the third place final in the 52nd installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Of course, a tournament that has a much different feel this year following the loss of the legend that is Kelly Bowers, the gymnasium. The opening ceremonies was renamed in his honor on Thursday night. We'll certainly have much more on that as the evening wears along and we'll have a special tribute to Kelly between our third place game and our championship final. Right now we're going to turn things over to our public address announcer Jordy Hewton for the introduction of the starting lineups.
So it is the Sir Winston Churchill Bulldogs out of Calgary, Alberta, wearing the white uniforms. They will be heading a screen right in the first half of action. Dr. Martin the Bull's sons out of Regina, Saskatchewan, wearing the burgundy with the gold trim, heading screen left. Sir Winston Churchill controlling the opening tip. This is Tokes Ajay and Rayvan Sharif with the ball. Ajay lobbing it, oh, almost a loop to start the game. The Ajay Cousins trying to dial that up with a little showtime to get things going. Unable yeah. to complete it, unfortunately. Winston Churchill's athleticism kind of pops off the chart right yeah. off the bat. And, you know, they had real trouble with Hansworth playing a 2-3 zone. The Boldest has chosen to match up man-to-man, -man, and they almost paid the price right off the bat. We'll have to see if they're able to athletically match up with this Winston Churchill team in a man defense. Ray Van Sharif losing the handle on that one. So back over to Leboldis, just underway in this one. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley with you once again at the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Nice ball movement here, ends up in the hands of Kaz Dornstadter. He puts it away, first points in this third place final. A reminder, as always, eight minute quarters at the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. So the games move quickly. An offensive foul away from the ball. Looks like they might get Pepe Ajay. Legal screen on Pepe Ajay for Sir Winston. And we saw in the semifinal, both of these teams really struggled to shoot from the perimeter. So you can see off both first possessions, they tried to get the ball in the paint, tried to attack the rim, and that's going to be the MO, I think, offensively for both these teams. But whichever team, I see the jack up a three, I was going to say, whichever team can kind of get loose from the perimeter might be the team that has the advantage on offense tonight. That shot won't drop for Mintz. So back come the Bulldogs, looking for their first points in this third place final. Ajay underneath, good job to kick it back to the corner. Han can't control that pass, able to track down the loose ball, but does step on the center line. So a backcourt violation back over to the Labolda Suns. Yeah, really good ball pressure there. And you know, a lot of times ball pressure, it forces people to speed themselves up, force themselves to get careless, and right there, just a, a simple court awareness issue. Turnover caused by the ball pressure there. This is Merrick Mintz bringing it up high. Losing the handle on his way through was Joe Camplin. Ball will stay, pardon me, ball will go back over to Sir Winston Churchill out of Calgary. Just underway in this third place final. Two teams with an awful lot of Bedford Road Invitational tournament experience in Sir Winston Churchill and Dr. Martin Leboldis. A lot of recent experience. Nice job to work his way through by Ilias Unlu. Yeah, just a traditional old school basketball set, a double low post, drop it in, back him down and get that layup. Both teams trying to really get to the basket so far in this one. Mintz will pick up the dribble, put up the mid-range jumper. That one no good. A Jai way up to grab the rebound. On controls, now Tokes Ajay gets up into the air. Nice little hesitation, puts it up with his left hand. A nice finish, he's able to get in the lane there. He wasn't able to do that in the semifinal there. Hey, they had him shooting a lot of threes from the perimeter, not his comfort zone. You can see when he gets into the rim, he's got a silky smooth ability to finish. Merrick Mintz almost losing the handle out of bounds, able to get it back. Lieb now onto the near side. This is Cade Mather, pretty well defended a couple of Bulldogs there, one of them will pick up the foul. Looks like it's going to be Ilias Unlu picking up his first. Send Kate Mather to the free throw line. Mather goes 0 for 2 from the line, but there for the Offensive board following the second miss is Kaz Dornstadter. Can't turn it into points. Now long outlet pass and a beautiful finish by Toka J. Great pass, great finish. Yeah, length of the court outlet, Kevin Love-esque there. And a great athletic finish on the other end. Camplin gets it knocked away. Dornstadter there to clean it up for his teammate. He goes to the left hand, that one won't drop. Unlu comes away with it for the Bulldogs. Not up at four apiece here in the early going. Sharif bounces in for Ajay, jams the bottom of the rim. 
Now on the run goes Jerry Weeb. Nice last second dish. Mintz gets it. That should have been a goal That should have been a goal That was clearly off the backboard wow. before the block happened. Really surprised. That's not one you normally see get missed, but I'm, no. I'm with you, Scott. That looked like a goaltending all day, every day. Yeah, that one wasn't even really particularly close. That uh, clearly off the backboard, and I think they want a clarification on that. The boldest coaches. Uh, yeah. And, and you know what? He's saying the ball was still going up, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. As soon as it touches the backboard, it's a goaltend if you block it. Coach Wade Bartlett turns around in frustration for the Suns. Another big block, two in a row here for the Suns. Weeble go on the run, tries to create a little space. Another block, but it'll come with a foul. Pepe Ajay. Well, I think they got him underneath. I think I think Ajay was clean up top. Sorry, you're absolutely right, Scott. Good call. Rayvan Sharif picks it up. Ajay got about to the top of the square there on that yeah. block. It was an incredible. And you know what? You don't have to foul. You got a guy that can get those to those balls. You don't have to foul underneath. You know, just, just make him put up the difficult shot. You know you've got that uh, glass cleaner coming behind you. Fortunate break for the Boldus. Jerry Weeb hits both of his free throws to bring the Boldus back within two. Approaching the midpoint of this first quarter. Told you the quarters move quickly here at Britt. Jai on the far side. A little bit of a screen from his cousin. Trying to attack underneath. Dishes for Anlu, then just ripping it right away. Merrick Mintz. He's got Dornstadter ahead. Losing the handle momentarily. Camplin leads to the long take. That one well long for Kate Mather. But right there to clean it up is Kaz Dornstadter. Yeah, Dornstadter, right guy at the right time. You expect those shots to hit the rim. When they don't, it's almost like an entry pass. So <laughs> you could grant the assist there. That'll tie things up at six. The screen here from Unlu. Han trying to find his way through, draws contact. Foul gonna be called on Merrick Mintz. First Leboldis foul of the game. Mintz has played pretty aggressively on the defensive end so far. He was the one who forced that, uh, that back and over, pressuring at half, got a steal just a couple minutes ago. Now picks up the foul, so you don't really mind that foul because he's playing so aggressively and he's generated two positive defensive plays so far. Just got to keep moving his feet and make sure he doesn't pick up another, another one before the end of the quarter. This is Abdul Abdullah receiving the inbounds pass. He just checked into the game, replacing Rayvan Sharif. Abdullah actually was announced as a starter at the top of the game. But instead, it was Sharif who came out to take the floor. So now they've got their starting lineup as announced into the game. In the corner, this is an exciting young player. Zach Hillis for the Suns. Abdullah going to try and run the floor. He'll draw contact underneath. Yeah, Abdullah with a strong attack to the rim. He's got a big, thick, strong guy. Once he gets out momentum, going hard to, uh, hard to make a play on the ball without committing the foul. Abdul Abdullah, six foot four forward, grade 12 for Sir Winston Churchill. No good on the front end, so we remain tied at six. No good on either attempt. Right there for the rebound to Jai. So both teams taking advantage of their teammates missing free throws. Yeah, as a coach, board. that's one of those things that drives you mad. You've got the inside position on the block there for the free throw, and you still can't get the box out. Giving second chance opportunities on free throws is so frustrating. Good play by Hillis to get a hand on it. Hahn able to get it back. Ball kicked underneath. Will go as a football. Fresh 14 for the Bulldogs. 2.38 to go. First quarter of play. This is Abdullah turnaround shot. That one rolls, won't drop. Hillis will push in the other direction for Dornstadter. Get it back into the hands of Zach Hillis. He'll come up high for Merrick Mintz. I believe there's some sort of shot clock malfunction there. As there should not be anywhere near 20 no. seconds on it. Doesn't really matter as the ball just puts one up, but then coming away with the loose oh, ball nice is for Winston Churchill and a dunk to finish it for Ilyas Unlu. Yeah, Unlu with a very nice finish, but that play was really made yeah. by Ajay with a really nice feed. It was almost... Uh, trailing the play there. Really good court vision. 
Seeing some good athleticism on both sides. Camplin, now Dornstadter back to Camplin, down to four on the shot clock. Apparently Camplin stepped out of bounds, so back over to the Bulldogs. Substitution for Sir Winston Churchill. Josefa Makbul will come into the game. Tino Chikukwa will check in wearing number 24, Leboldis. You'll often see in this third place game that coaches go a little bit more liberally to the benches. Well, these teams both played this afternoon. Yeah. You know, only a, a couple hours ago actually right. for uh, for Leboldis. So legs could be an issue if Especially the boldest actually too in the in the semifinal they played pretty much 32 minutes against, uh, against pressure, you know uh, they had to deal with full court pressure, three quarter right. court pressure, pretty much the entire game. So we'll see how their legs hold up as this game progresses, especially if it stays close. The other thing for Sir Winston Churchill, they got the first round by, so they've only played two games coming into this one, where the boldest has played three in addition to playing more recently. So Winston Churchill beating Holy Cross in the first round, 71-63 before losing to Hansworth this afternoon in that semifinal. Chikukwa turnaround shot, won't go, knocked out of bounds. Ball will now remain. Now they're gonna give that, uh, they're gonna say that's a shooting foul, I believe oh. even. We got a Jai with the foul coming over the back, and I think they say he was going for the putback dunk, so they're going to give him two shots on this. Although I guess it's actually the fifth foul, so perhaps that's just into the bonus. Just in the bonus there, yeah. So Cade Mather to the free throw line, gets his first point of the night. Pulls his sons back within one. That'll tie it. Open look, Mohamed Mazar, no good. I'm not nice. sure if we've actually seen a shot made outside the paint yet tonight. Yeah, I think you're possibly right. Tilksajai does come down with the rebound. He'll work his way into the paint. That shot off the mark. Ball will stay with Sir Winston Churchill. Another substitution for Leboldis. Checking in Ethan Marshall wearing nine for the Suns. Ball stripped out of the hands of Ajai. Leboldis with a Three on three in the other direction. Ends up being kind of a wild shot for Camplin. So now back comes Abdullah. He gets tied up. Hmm. Gonna be a foul call. Yeah, they're gonna get him on a foul, but I thought he had a lot of ball. Looks it like sure he just reached like out and took the ball. Yeah. I was sort of expecting that to go as a jump ball, but we'll send Abdullah Abdullah to the free throw line, looking for his first points. Low scoring affair out of the gate in this third place final. Certainly several things could be contributing to that, not least of those, as you mentioned, a bit of fatigue perhaps. Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're tired, when you have tired legs, the first thing to go is your jump shot. And you know, these two teams are not particularly uh, high percentage jump shot shooting teams to begin with, so both of these teams, I think, are gonna have a lot of trouble making outside the paint. Now, defensively, you have to adjust. If you know your team, your opponent can't make a shot outside the paint, I'd start packing the paint pretty heavily force him to shoot outside, maybe and even move into a, into a zone, just pack it inside, or at least a sagging man-to-man. -man Tino Chikukwa and Abdul Abdullah trade baskets. Well, pass up ahead, man, that came pretty close to going in for Cade Mather. That was actually was a really good opportunity yeah. there, if he could have just kind of got his body turned a little bit toward the hoop there. After eight minutes of play at Bedford Road Collegiate, 52nd installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament, we got a one-point game. Sir Winston Churchill, Bulldogs out of Calgary, lead 11-10. Over the Labolda Suns out of Regina, of course. We talked about it a little bit in the opening, and certainly we will more as the night goes along, but 
different feel to Brit this year with the loss of Kelly Bowers, the renaming of the gymnasium. Uh, Scott, if you don't mind, just ask you uh, some of your memories of Kelly Bowers, what it's like. I know uh, a long association with uh, with Biff uh, over, over the years. Yeah, you know, um, my first coaching job in basketball came from Kelly. When I was first year out of high school, I was um, – I was at home and he called and he needed somebody to coach the Mount Royal Junior Boys basketball team. And uh, I said, I don't know any, I've never coached for you. Oh yeah, you can, you can do it. And, you know, it was Kelly Bowers way yeah, and, uh, and, and he got me all fired up to do it. And so <laughs> that first year I took a bus across the city from Lakeview over Mount Royal every day, coached the junior basketball team and, and had a great time. And, and so that was sort of my first real, I mean, he'd ref me in high school and I right. had some interactions with him and, and then over the years, of course, uh, I was here at Bedford taught for quite a long time. Sure. And, and, and teaching around the city and coaching. He's, he'd ref so many of my games and seeing him at the football fields and basketball ball fields. And uh, the guy was the same. I mean, I, I knew him for pretty much most of my adult life yeah. and, and all my adult life. And he was the same guy last year that he was, you know, Absolutely. 30 years ago. So just an incredible personality, just an incredible force in Saskatoon sports. Yeah, the, the term one of a kind is probably used a little bit too liberally, but uh, I think it certainly applies to Kelly Bowers. Absolutely. There, there will never be another Kelly Bowers. And uh, as the Brit tournament has gone along, we've certainly missed him a lot this weekend, but uh, great to see the, the job that's been done here at Bedford Road, keeping the legacy alive, the renaming of the gymnasium. Great display in the hallway. A reminder between our third place game and championship game, we will have a special tribute to Kelly as well. Underway in the second quarter of play. Ethan Marshall at the free throw line for the Labolda Suns goes over two. Free throw shooting hasn't been too strong in this game. No, anything outside of about three feet. It's it's not going in for either team right now so far. This is Makbul. Gets it knocked out of his hands by Hillis. Officials look at each other, eventually decide that the ball will stay with the Bulldogs. Substitution for Laboldis. Cade Mather out, Merrick Mintz back in. Jai gets it into the hands of Makbul. He'll pick up the dribble, this is Unlu up high. Dornstadter on him, running take, nice touch. Ilyas Unlu. Yeah, he's shown some nice athleticism yeah. around the rim. He had the, the dunk on transition there a few minutes ago in there. That was a tough shot going to his right there. Nice touch off the glass. He leads all scorers in the early going with his six points in what is a low scoring game. Dornstadter unable to grab that firm pass. It goes out of bounds yeah. back over to Churchill. And such a missed opportunity in a game when you have to get the ball about three feet from the rim. Beautiful pick and roll, and they did. And that pass probably traveling a little too fast. It was a tough catch. Yeah. Uh, you got to let your big man have a chance to get it and finish two feet from the rim. Zach Hill is out. Jerry Weeb in for the Suns. They trail by three. Seven minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Muhammad Mazar on the outside looking to attack. Ball out of bounds will stay with Churchill. Five seconds on the shot clock. Six fifty-three to go, second quarter. Game one of our doubleheader. Of course, the championship final yet to come as well. Again, knocked out of bounds. Mike Siona didn't appear to enjoy the way he received that one. Shaking it off like the pro he is. Now down to two. It's going to have to be a last-second heave. Doesn't hit anything. That come the Suns, looking to attack is Mintz. He's going to be called for the walk. Good defense by the Bulldogs. Yeah, Mintz had really nowhere to go. Tried to force it inside, and that was just excellent positional defense. Again, Labold is just uh, not really willing to take it. He took one three-pointer early on, and really not even any attempts from outside the key after that first one. Told you a little bit about Sir Winston Churchill's path to this third place final. Let's take a look at how Laboldis ended up in this third place game. Got a real scare in the first round from Saskatoon, Walter Murray, a yeah, they two did. point loss. Yeah, that's right. Of course, we, we, we do have the soft spot for Walter Murray. You're actually back teaching at Walter Murray now. Which I is, am indeed. Which is very cool, in addition to it being our alma mater, a great game there in the opening round. 
two-point loss for Walter Murray as Laboldis advanced. Uh, Murray with a chance to win that one at the end, it sounded like. Yeah, uh, freshman point guard, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Mahadi. Uh, he's gonna be an awesome player in this city. He had a chance to go, uh, had a chance to get a kind of a layup over two guys and just in and out, heartbreaker for Walter Murray, but they've got a bright future ahead the next, next few years. Laboldis then advanced to take on another Saskatoon team, St. Joseph, they beat them 64-53 and the final score in their semifinals afternoon might not indicate how close the game was against Raymond as it was a pretty tight affair in the first half. They ended up losing 70 to 45 to the Raymond Comets who we'll see in the championship final as Raymond really pulled away late in that one. Yeah, it was really the, the second half of the fourth quarter. They just, every shot went down for Raymond and, and the Bolas just couldn't buy a bucket in the second half. Tell you, that's going to be a great final coming our way. Can't, I, I can't predict what's going to happen between Hansworth and Raymond. Uh, two pretty different teams coming from two totally different backgrounds, but uh, a lot of talent on both sides. Absolutely, and just, yeah, two completely uh, different styles of basketball, but both very effective. It's going to be a really fun game to watch. Ball ends up on the ground. Churchill comes away with it. And Sharif. Now a Jai underneath in the double team can't get it to go. A foul call against Laboldis. Yeah, and Laboldis there in that possession, they switched to his own defense, kind of similar thinking, try to make them for, force uh, force Winston Churchill to shoot from the perimeter. And still, great ball movement by Winston Churchill against the zone. They still got a point blank shot and a trip to the foul line. Ethan Marshall out, Zach Hillis back in for Laboldis. Happy Ajay heads to the free throw line. First points for the big man. Six foot five, grade 11 forward is Pepe Ajay. Second one, not quite as much on the mark. Willis pushes ahead for Weed. Dorn Stodder, now up top, this is Camplin. Hillis underneath for Doran Stodder. Ball out wow. of bounds over to Churchill. That's interesting. You know, he didn't want to call the foul on that, but there was contact yeah. enough that it actually knocked him out of bounds. And at that point, you probably have to... It's one of those ones you expect to see go yeah. as a foul, even though you're right. It wasn't, wasn't necessarily hard contact. And Jai prevents that one from going out of bounds. Unlu almost loses it. He gets it back, puts up the little jumper, and that'll drop. Very soft spot at the free throw line of that zone defense. A couple passes, and uh, Unlu had just nobody there in front of him. I'm not sure what happened to the middle defender there. Shot well long for Merrick Mintz. Up to eight points now is Ilias Unlu. Tokes a jai. We'll bring it around. Taylor Mazar. The Boldness is in a little bit of trouble here. They're, they're having such a hard time scoring from the perimeter. Now they've switched defenses from the man to the zone, trying to keep them out of the paint. And the last two possessions down, we see a turnover there, but they, they were unable to, to stop them from getting these looks in the paint. So Lebolas has to come up with some solutions on offense here because it seems like what they're dialing up on defense is not able to keep the Bulldogs from their strength, which is getting it inside. Muhammad Mazar ends up in the stands. Ball goes over to Lebolas. Substitution for Sir Winston Churchill. Noah Redekop will check in. That'll send Mazar to the bench. First shift for Redekop wearing number four. Batted around following the miss. Good play by Ajay to get a hand on it. Tips it ahead to his cousin and can be called for the walk. Yeah, Laboldis did a great job of getting back there. With those open floor turnovers, especially against an athletic team like Winston Churchill, I mean, that can start the avalanche of points. And Laboldis did a great job of getting back, forcing the travel. They need to close this quarter strong. Hillis controls, goes to his left. Looks like we're going to get Redekop with the foul, fresh into the game. Got his name on the score sheet. Yeah, and it's interesting. I don't think we saw Redekop in the second, in the semifinal game until deep into the second yeah. half. So maybe sort of an indication of where their legs are at and, and uh, needing to get some fresh bodies in there. And this goes two for two from the free throw line. Spans the, cuts the lead down to four, I should say. 
Pepe Ajay on the drive. He draws contact. Jerry Wee will be called for the foul. Yeah, they've got Ajay running that baseline from short corner to short corner against the zone. And he's doing such a great job of establishing position. You're not supposed to be able to make a deep post entry against a 2-3 zone. And he's gotten it about three times there. He pretty much can get the ball wherever he wants, just imposing his physical will on this game. Cade Mather back into the game for Leboldis. Joe Camplin to the bench. Jai good on both free throw attempts. Churchill's advantage now, six. So we hit the four minute mark in the second quarter. Lots of contact there as Mather was making his way through the key. Now Jai getting in there, tying up Ben Swallow. Possession arrow favoring Sir Winston Churchill. So Ben Swallow wearing number 10 for Leboldus, also fresh into the game. Up top, this is Redekop. Yeah, Leboldus was knocked out of that, that zone. They, they couldn't stop the ball from getting into that low post. They switched back to the man and it's exactly the same result. <laughs> Pepe Ajay there to clean it up. He's up to five points on the night. The lead up to eight, which with the scoring pace in this one, it's feeling like a huge lead. Although right there with a three-point answer is Cade Mather. Yeah, big shot by Mather. They needed that in such a big way. They need a few more of these perimeter shots to drop now to loosen up that, uh, that Winston Churchill defense. And then Mather right there to pick off the ill-advised bounce pass through the key from Redekop. On the run, Ben Swallow, he'll draw contact on his way through. With that three, Mather has taken over the scoring lead for Leboldis with his five points. Four points for Kaz Dornstadter coming in the early going. Abdul Abdullah back into the game for the Bulldogs. That'll send Unlu to the bench. Swallow misses on the front end. Second one won't drop either. Abdullah there for the rebound. Yeah, such missed opportunities at the free throw line for Winston Churchill. When they are attacking the rim, they're, they're getting a few foul calls and just can't capitalize. Redekop up top, gets it into the hands of Sharif. Able to hang on to it. Abdullah. Took the step before the dribble. He's called for the walk. In for Austin Jaggard wearing number 10 for the Bulldogs. We'll sh see the floor for the first time. And certainly fatigue could be a factor, but also the reality is playing for the bronze medal is probably also a little bit less important to these teams. It's nice to get a little bit deeper into the benches perhaps, give, give the players all a, a, a Brit experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're playing rotation tournament basketball, uh, you know, it's a variety of things. One, yeah, you want to win the tournament, but it really does, in, in, a, in a setting that ultimately doesn't matter for your league or your playoffs, gives you a chance to develop some players and give them real real minutes, in a, in a, especially in a nice environment like this. Really nice running take there for Zach Hillis. Gives him four points on the night. Hillis on the under-16 provincial team. Abdullah shot well off the mark. Pick up the loose ball is Redekop. So Bulldogs will reset. Shot clock issue here, so. Whistle the play dead, 20 seconds on the shot clock. It had been showing 10. That's interesting, it probably should have gone to 14. I believe that was off a an offensive rebound to hit the rim. Yeah, I think you're so right. So it should have gotten reset to 14. Yeah, that's a good call. Another shot well off the mark from distance. This time it's Jaggard heaving it up. Weeb, now Hillis. Hillis carves his way through, gets the lay in, an easier take this time. Yeah, nice drive and really no help defense. They actually, the, the drive actually knocked two of the defenders into each other. <laughs> 1.35 to go, first half. All of a sudden we've got a one point game. 
when it looked like Churchill might be able to pull away with the eight point lead too long in the key now against Abdullah. So a chance for Laboldis to get a lead, something they haven't had in quite some time. Yeah, Laboldis you know, kind of sparked that little three pointer there by Mather a few possessions ago. Now they've been able to get a couple, couple baskets and, and a few stops strung together in a row. And, and yeah, the one, the one good thing about it is as bad as Winston, or as bad as uh, Laboldis has been on the offensive end, uh, Winston Churchill hasn't been a heck of a lot better. They've missed their opportunities at the line as well. They're not really shooting the ball from their perimeter either. So, you know, what seems like a game that was kind of one-sided really in terms of the actual scoring spread hasn't been that much. This is Jerry Weed getting the ball stripped. Now he's going to try and take it back from Ajay. Out of bounds will stay with Sir Winston Churchill. Had a couple of good looks at the crowd here at Bedford Road. Of course, once again, as is often the case, no Saskatoon teams playing on Saturday night. And wintry conditions outside, despite all that nice crowd here at Bedford Road for this third place final. Nice running take here for Jesse Hahn. He's got his first points of the night. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just something that you're not going to see anywhere else. You know, if you have the local team, even if it's uh, city teams, but not the local hosting team, yeah. you might not get a full gym in a lot of other places. But certainly no teams from the city in the final and or the third place game and, and what amounts to essentially a full gym. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's really one of those unique Brit things for sure. Foul called against Ajay. Weeb on the far side, now Mather. Couple of dribbles, he jams the bottom of the rim. Good job to create the opening, just couldn't finish. Now Ajay in the other direction, big of a collision there. Second chance for him, <laughs> just trying to protect his own life has been swallowed <laughs> down on the ground. You know, he kind of, uh, uh, not great block down yeah. by Mather there, but he, persistence for Winston Churchill. They had a bunch of, you know, it was Hardy after he kind of kind of flopped on that first one. It was at least deemed as a flop, no no whistle on the contact. And then his body underneath the rim actually was like a defender. They were looking <laughs> for their feet and, and uh, seeing where he's going to land. Ajay couldn't really get his footing and down, but eventually he was able to put it down. Time winding down, second quarter. Looks like Churchill will be able to take the last shot if they want to. Instead, that's going to be picked off. Desperation heave from three quarters court. That one won't go. I think Ajay had actually a lob, looking for the yeah. dunk there. That was open. The, the bullet chest pass certainly wasn't, but the lob over the top, I think they had a chance at that one. So as I mentioned a couple of moments ago, no Saskatoon teams involved on Saturday night. A tough go of it. Actually, one extra Saskatoon team playing at Brit this year as the team from Ottawa that was originally scheduled to be here unfortunately couldn't get sanctioned and so ended up with five Saskatoon teams in the tournament but only one Saskatoon victory on the A side of the draw and that one was for St. Joseph of Saskatoon. They, be they beat Seminaire St. Joseph 66-59 in the opening round before losing to this Laboldas team 64-53 in round number two. I had a chance to talk with the head coach of St. Joseph. Let's take a look. One of the Saskatoon teams looking to put their name onto the big Brit banner at the end of the gym will be the St. Joseph Guardian once again. Happy to be joined by coach Matt Harbage. Matt, first of all, let's talk a little bit about that Saskatoon basketball scene, how things are shaping up this season. It, it feels like for the last uh, few years, it's been a little unpredictable and pretty close, pretty, uh, pretty tight competition. Same thing uh, for this year? Yeah, it, it, there's probably more parity in our league this year than we have seen in, in five years. And there's, you know, I think six, seven, eight teams that could beat each other on any given night, which is really exciting. I mean, that, that's what we want. We want competitive games. And so uh, every night is, is a fight and a battle. And, and uh, I think it's making everyone better. But, you know, I think it's, like you said, unpredictable. And we're not really sure what's going to happen down the stretch. And of course, the way the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament falls, it comes pretty early on in your season. How does that set you, the pace for you for the rest of the year? How does, does it, playing at that high level, does that, uh, does that kind of set the tone for the rest of the season? Absolutely. I mean, we've had years where we've kind of used uh, Brit to jumpstart the rest of our season. And, and we, even though we may not have won, but getting in these competitive games and these situations here that you're going to get at Brit, uh, you can certainly use as a springboard for the second half of your season. 
and it's a lot of fun for the, for the players, not just for the people at Bedford Road, but for all the Saskatoon schools, all the out-of-town schools. Uh, this is an incredible experience. Yeah, they do such a good job here of taking care of, of everyone, coaches, players, fans, whoever it is. So it, it really is an incredible experience for everyone, not only the people from Bedford Road, but um, everyone here has a good experience. Uh, tell us a little bit about your team. We saw a few of your players here at the media conference, uh, players that we should be looking out for uh, during the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament and, and throughout the season. Yeah, we got a mix of youth and experience. Um, you know, the two gentlemen I brought with me are Daniel McCullough and Sam Marshall. And, uh, this is their third year on the team, so they're kind of our experience and, and they kind of lead us. But we got um, you know, some other young talent coming up that we're really excited about and, and hoping to get some contributions from, from everyone. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're looking to play fast and, and use our athleticism to defend and, and hopefully put ourselves in positions to win games. Awesome, Coach Harbage. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes to chat with us. I want to wish you good luck at the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament and the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Back live inside the Kelly Bowers Gymnasium at Bedford Road Collegiate. 52nd installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Bit of a low scoring affair here in this third place final. Sir Winston Churchill out of Calgary leads Regina's Leboldis 24 19. Quick look at the leading scores. Ilias Umlu leading the way. He's got eight points for Sir Winston Churchill, seven points for Pepe Ajay, six points for Zach Hillis on the boldest side of things. Cade Mather has five as we get set to take a look at some of the highlights from, from the first half. Uh, we talked a little bit, Scott, about you know some of the reasons why maybe it's a, a bit of a sluggish start. So it did see some good defense as we saw there, but also uh, perhaps a little bit of sluggishness and a, certainly a, a tough schedule for Laboldis coming into this one. Yeah, you know, Laboldis, not only have they played uh, this is their fourth game of the tournament, but they've played four tough games. You know, yeah. we talked about that one against Walter Murray. It was a down to the buzzer, highly competitive game. Uh, they played again on Friday night with a, with a competitive game. Saturday in the semifinal, about a two hour, three hour turnaround into this one. So it's not like they really had any blowouts where they could sit the bench, sit uh, their starters and, and kind of relax. They've had four tough games. Uh, so yeah, maybe legs are a bit of an issue here for them. Good look at the nice drive there by Hillis late in the, the second quarter play. Just about ready to get things going here in the third quarter play. I want to thank Matt Harbage again for taking some time to chat with us and being featured between the halves on our halftime coverage. Again, the drought for Saskatoon will continue. No Saskatoon team has won the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament since Holy Cross took it back to back years in 2003 and 2004. And then before that, you got to go all the way back to 1990. And I believe, oh yeah, that was Walter Murray that won that one. It sure was. And any yeah. memories of that one, Scott? Well, you know, I remember it. Uh, it was perhaps the greatest basketball team <laughs> of all time. But my mom, memory's a little hazy, <laughs> just from what I remember. Just about ready to get things going. Well, Boldus will start off the second half with the ball. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley, the whole Shaw Spotlight crew with you tonight from Bedford Road for the 52nd installment of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Thanks so much for joining us live on TV or online. First possession out. Winston Churchill's realized as well that Lavolas can't shoot from the outside. <laughs> They've come out in a 2-3 zone here, which I thought they might have done a little bit earlier just because Lavolas, I think they've hit a 1-3 pointer who came near the end of that first half though. They're really having trouble. Both teams really having trouble getting anything yeah. going outside. So I think it's a really good move by Winston Churchill. That was Camplin on the miss. Ball staying with Laboldus Mather now to the corner for Mintz. Mintz hits from the corner. <laughs> Just like that, right? <laughs> Just like that. But you know what? This could actually be as well a spark for Laboldus because it might force them to shoot some threes. You know, they were reluctant to get any up. I think they only took about three of them. You know, so maybe they're going to force them to get their perimeter game going. And, and you never know. Once you see a few drop, a few start to go through the bucket, you can get red hot in a hurry, especially if you're if you're traditionally a good shooter. You know, I don't know this Lebolas team really well enough to know how they perform on a sort of a game by game by game basis. But but uh, from what I've seen so far in the tournament, they're they're not a really good shooting team. But you never know. There could be some guys out there that are just waiting to catch fire. 
Foul called on Joe Kaplan. Boldus making it a two point game with that three pointer made. Now back to a four point lead. Friendly roll for Pepe Ajay. Yeah, and the Boldus has got to figure out how to keep Ajay out of the paint. He is just, you know, even when he doesn't score, he's gotten to the free throw line a few times as well, but he's just gotten wherever he wants within three feet of the rim. They, they've got to do a better job of putting a body on him as he comes through the paint, not giving him that easy position. Three pointer won't go for Merrick Mintz. And the Boldus. Showing a bit more aggressiveness in terms of that perimeter shooting here out of the gate in the second half. Turnaround shot on the inside. That'll drop for Kaz Dornstarter. He's up to six points on the night. Yeah, nice, little, nice little push shot by Dornstarter. And, and just really no resistance there. You got to get a hand up and contest that one. Sharif going to spot up. This would be for two. Just inside the arc. Jai there for the rebound. Gets it back outside for Sharif. Now Han looks to attack. Instead, back to Sharif. Now near side, Tokes Ajay. He'll spot up for the long jumper. Little contact. Get the foul called against Cade Mather. Yeah, and, and Mather, that's a terrible foul for a team that has not been able to make jump shots. You're giving him two free, free shots. A hand up and a contest is all you need there. You don't have to go for the block. Free throws have also been a bit of an adventure on both sides tonight. Tokes Ajay missing the front end here. So remains a two-point Churchill lead. Second one spit out as well. Second chance for Churchill as his cousin Pepe Ajay came down with it, unable to put it away. So now back comes the Bulls, a chance to tie or take the lead. Looking for that lead is Jerry Weeb. That one no good. Whistle blows just as some debris ended up on the court. So we'll just be Churchill ball out of bounds. Substitution for Churchill. Ilias Unlu comes back into the game. Abdul Abdullah out. Unlu sporting a bit of a different look here in the second half. He's got that long flowing hair tied up. I didn't recognize him when he first checked in. Well, he did some good things in the first half. Sure again, did. You know, he's, he's able to sort of creatively contort his body and get those, those shots off inside. Unlu leading all scores with his eight points in the game. Kate Mather picks up his third. Free throw woes continue as that one just nicks the front of the rim for Unlu. No good on either attempt. Weeb looking ahead for Mather. That one's knocked out of bounds. Last touched by Tokes Ajay. 16 seconds for Laboldis on the shot clock. Mintz will look to attack. Big block. The arms of Unlu. Ajay thought about attacking on the other side. Now slows things down. Now we'll go back in. Tries to wrap around underneath. That one won't go. Gets the loose ball. So yeah, another chance for Churchill. Just, just out physicaling the boldest down there. There's a bit of an illegal screen down there as well, but scrapping for the loose ball coming up in the second possession. They're just, they're more physical down low. They're going to win this, this style of game. Sharif from distance, that one no good. Contact down low, looks like they're going to get Joe Camplin for the foul. Yeah, that, that's ironic. I mean, you know, the, uh, Winston Churchill, like I just said, has been really physical down low. There are a couple, and I think that was just Kamplin being frustrated with kind of getting knocked and pushed around. And, and you know, you, you, usually the second guy is the one they see, and I think that's kind of what happened there. Kind of retaliates out of frustration, gets hit with the foul call. Ajay trying to muscle his way through, able to get it to go. Pepe Ajay. And he's you know, now you, taking over the scoring lead in the you game. You a guy like Lejai, you're not going to stop him when he gets the ball three feet in. So you just got to gotta get position before he gets that ball. Not let him catch a ball there. The running take rims out for Cade Mather. Had a good look at it from distance on the quick shot. But it won't drop. Remains a four-point Churchill lead. Midway through the third quarter. Zach Hillis back in. Jerry Weeb out for the Suns. Ajay controls. Now into the hands of Pepe Ajay. He'll draw contact. Oh, 
Merrick Mintz picking it up. Second of the game on Merrick. That's really not a bad foul. I mean, he's going to score when he gets that close to the basket, and he hasn't proven to be an effective free throw shooter. So, you know, you, you don't want your bigs picking up those fouls, but you have a guard like that digging down underneath, trying to get the steal, and, the, and, and if he picks up a foul and sends him to the line, not the worst thing in the world, but you got to get the defensive rebound off the free throws. Two more free throw misses, but yeah, right there to clean it up, Sir Winston Churchill. Nice turnaround shot. Jesse Hahn gets it to drop. Back to a six point advantage for Churchill. The Jai ends up crashing into Cade Mather. He'll pick up the foul. That'll be number four on Pepe Ajay, so he's going to head to the bench. Egosi Isaraman checks in for his first shift of the night, wearing number 12 to replace him for Sir Winston Churchill. Camplin looks in for Mather. Good read there by Ajay. Ball will stay with Churchill out of bounds. See some frustration from Camplin. Well, that was one of those that might very well have gone off Winston, Winston Churchill, but it was either, you know, give the ball back to Winston Churchill out of bounds or call the foul. So, right. Right. Probably it, the yeah. better of two options. Now we'll get an offensive foul away from the ball. So back to Aboldus. Screen against Issa Rahman, who just checked in. The lead six for Churchill. Quick take here for Hillis. He can hit from out there. He's got a great shooter's touch. Well, they're going to need that shooter's touch. That was, uh, that was a very timely basket for, for uh, Leboldis. And they just they, they need to keep smart, moving the ball smartly and getting those, uh, those perimeter looks whenever they can get them up. Hillis now up to nine points on the night. Long shot. Well, that's the mark for a Jai. Good hustle by Unley to get in there and try and keep it alive. He gets tied up by Mather. Session arrow favoring Leboldis. You can almost feel Leboldis' frustration with the physicality of this game. You know, they're kind of feeling like they're kind of being bullied a little bit, and they're kind of now looking to the refs a little bit. They're retaliating a little bit. So something to kind of keep an eye on, whether Leboldis can kind of keep a handle on their emotions here. Check it. Possession arrow favoring Churchill. This is Hahn looking to attack. He dishes for Sharif. Sharif for three from the corner. There's a beautiful penetrating pitch. First perimeter shot we've seen of the night for the Bulldogs. Also first points of the night for Sharif, and Hillis has the three-point answer on the other side. Well, there you go. Now we're playing basketball. <laughs> Hillis now up into double digits with 12 points. <laughs> Looking for there another we go. one. Let's make it rain. It's there a scoreboard go. frenzy all of a sudden. We went Tokes from like 1985 <laughs> to 2020 <laughs> in about two trips down the floor. There we go. Tokes a Jai now up to seven points on the night. Remains a six point game. Hill is pushing his way in now towards the corner. That one no good for Camplin. But it does but hit from the other side and you for see, Mintz. You see what that does? Hillis pump fake from about 25 feet there. Got the defender in the air. He created so much space. Now there's some gravity that, that pulls those defenders away from the paint, and now it opens up everything. You get a few perimeter shots to drop, and all of a sudden, your whole offense opens up. A rare miss here in this stretch. That one coming from Unlu. So now a three would tie it, trying to do just that. Cade Mather, he drains it. We're all knotted up at 36. Yeah, sometimes all you need is that confidence, right? Now they're confident enough to take them. They're taking the shots that are there, especially in the zone. And uh, now they have, they've seen a few go down. Whole new world of confidence and a, and a whole new offense that opens up once that three ball starts going. Another offensive foul away from the ball. Legal screen. Second. Foul in fairly short order against Isaraman. Boldus hasn't led since very early in this game. Chance to get the lead here. Mintz to the corner. Now back up high for Mather. Other side. Too many steps. Merrick Mintz called for the walk. Yeah, it's too bad he shuffled his feet there a little bit because again, because they've been kneeling those threes, on that pump fake, he had the defender up on the balls of his feet. That driving lane was open if he was able to uh, just get the ball down before the travel was called. Mohamed Mazar 
Zafa Makbul back into the game for Sir Winston Churchill. We've seen their lead evaporate with a minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Ajay looking to attack, ended up in pretty decent position. Ends up jamming the rim. Hill is gonna put it up on the run from distance. There we go, and, and confidence in a, in a shooter is just so contagious. And now Hillis, he's feeling it. He's really feeling it. And, and this ball might go up at any point in time over half court when he has the ball. Nine points for Hillis in the third quarter alone gives him 15 overall. Still a minute four to go here in this third quarter. Laboldis with that rare lead. This is Makbul. He's going to put up the long two. That one. Jams the rim. Yeah, the classic wedgie. Yeah. I don't think he get points for that though, so. It's impressive. Like I feel if you went to the gym and shot a thousand times trying to oh. do that, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do it. Under a minute to go, third quarter. Laboldis with the three point lead and the ball. Mather from the corner, no good. Another excellent look though. They're, they're getting the shots they want. They're moving the ball well. Ah, a little too aggressive there by Mintz. He'll pick up the foul. I think that's three on him now as well. You're correct. Sending Tokes Ajay to the free throw line. He's got seven points on the night. It's not the biggest deal in the world because of the eight minute quarters. We sure. have eight, and a half, eight minutes and 40 seconds left in the game, but still. The free throw being made in this game is just about the rarest <laughs> feat. So good job Tokes Ajay. Second one won't go. Don't want to ask too much. Ball out of bounds over to Laboldis. Two point game following the one for two trip for Tokes Ajay. Time getting short, third quarter. Camplin into the front court. Now Hillis, he's feeling it. Looking to attack against the double team, loses the handle. Coming yeah, away with it is Izaraman. Kind of forced the action there a little bit. You know, sometimes you get overconfident. Sure. He just needs to stay in his lane a little bit, knock down those threes when they're available. Tokes Ajay long on the three-point attempt. So now Laboldis can hold for the last shot. Just at the last second, Mather saw that ball coming. Down to five now, looking to attack. Drawing the contact is Joe Camplin. And you, can, you can just see how the defense is now spread out. Laboldis has got shooters around the three-point line that all now have to be honored by the Winston Churchill defense. And now a little crossover dribble gets in the lane, help defense is too far to come. They have to commit the foul. It's Issa Rahman committing his third foul. Camplin, his first point of the night. Spans the Laboldis advantage to three. There's only three and a half seconds to go here in the third quarter. A couple of substitutions for the final three and a half seconds for Laboldis. Ben Swallow, Tommy Avram. Avram seeing his first shift wearing number 13. Ajay gonna put up the running take. Good distance on it, didn't have the line. And so heading to the fourth and final quarter of play, it is a four point lead for Laboldis after they trailed for the vast majority of this one. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when shots start going in. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and especially you, you stretch that defense out, like we've said, all of a sudden they can't just pack the lane. They have to defend a lot more space, and it just becomes a whole new world. So Laboldis did exactly what they had to do in that third quarter. And we'll see if they can keep it going or if that was one of those hot streaks that comes and goes. Zach Hillis has taken over as the leading scorer for Laboldis out of Regina. He's up to 15 points on the night. Eight for Cade Mather, six for Merrick Mentz. But yeah, certainly after the sluggish pace that we saw in the, the first half of play, that was that was a pretty fun third quarter. Yeah, it sure was. It was up and down. It was spread the floor, lots of threes. It was really what basketball is now. I mean, really, basketball's become a, a game of space and shooting and skill. And really, in the first half, it was almost like a throwback to the, to the 90s where it was basically just pounded inside, low post, a lot of just get within two, three feet of the rim. And uh, that's pretty easily defended now. So uh, it was nice to see them open up, play basketball the way we're used to seeing it played. And hopefully these teams can continue that into the fourth quarter. We have a good finish. 
Pepe Ajay has taken over as the leading scorer for Sir Winston Churchill with his 11 points, eight points apiece for Ilias Unlu and Tokes Ajay. Pepe Ajay's shot gets blocked as we get underway here in the fourth quarter of play. So now the momentum firmly on the side of Laboldis, something they hadn't really had all game long. Four point lead with the ball. Seven and a half to go in this third place final. That will be called against Pepe Ajay. And that's tough for a guy like Ajay. You've got uh, a little guy driving in on you, a perimeter shooter. Ajay, he just owns the paint. And that'll actually be the end of the game and for Pepe yeah, Ajay. To, to that's number game, five. I'm not sure how much contact there really was there. He kind of running straight up. Um, it looked like Hillis kind of fell into him as he was throwing up kind of a prayer. Uh, to have your big man and a guy who just physically dominant inside. Uh, to, to leave the game on this one is, is huge. And, and that really, I think, turns the tide and turns the favor, turns the advantage to Lavolis to lose a physical presence like a Jai. Well, pass to the inside. Camplin can't grab it, sort of bangs his head. And, you know, I'll be honest, that fifth foul on him snuck up on me a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't see, I didn't realize he had four. Poor inbounding form for Sir Winston Churchill. So back over to Lavolis. Not much going right in the last few minutes here for the Bulldogs. Open look from the corner. Cade Mather for three. That one no good. Toksajai comes down with the rebound. Mazar, far corner. Unlu, he'll get it back outside for Mazar. A few steps in, into the hands of Unlu. He goes off the glass. That one no good. And Swallow comes away with it for Laboldis. Hillis up high. Now Mintz back into the hands of Camplin. Swallow works his way through, leads to the open take from the far side for Hillis. Here in the boulder, so that's a great look and the exact guy you want to take the shot in that situation. Carving his way through Tokes Ajay. He'll draw contact and head to the free throw line. And Tokes Ajay probably is going to have to be the guy who puts this on his shoulders. Uh, Unlu and, and Ajay are going to have to be the two main guys to create opportunities with their athleticism and their ability to finish inside, spread the floor with some shooters. But uh, without, uh, without the big man Ajay, it's going to fall on these two guys to create. Cade Mather out for Laboldis. Kaz Dornstadter back in. The Ajay at the free throw line is... Sir Winston Churchill Bulldogs out of Calgary trail by four in this third place final. Second one bounces a couple times but will drop. Brings him up to 12 points on the night. Leading scorer for the Bulldogs. Contact on the other side, Ben Swallow. It's just good perseverance by Swallow. Bulldogs back in a man-to-man -man defense, chased out of that zone by the hot shooting, and uh, they were unable to get the body on a box out for what was a good initial defensive possession. Swallow can't find the mark on the front end. Remains a three-point Regina lead. Second one no good either. Dornstadt are going to be called for the foul as he went up looking for the offensive board following the miss. Over under on free throw percentage tonight, 25%? I'd say that's pretty Is that pretty generous? Good. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, one out of four is about what it's been. Yeah. Nice touch from distance here. Huzaifa Makbul's first points of the night. He'll hit for three, and that'll tie things up at 41. Great take. Yeah, very timely three-pointer. They needed it in a big way there. Dornstadter. Hillis now Swallow over to the far side, looking to smash his way through his mints. Can't get it to go. More contact on the other side as Mazar on the drive. Out of bounds back to Laboldis. Yeah, two kind of wild drives on both ends. Neither one rewarded with a bailout call, so we play on and get a timeout. Laboldis going to take a timeout and talk things over. Reminder, this is just game one of two tonight on Shaw Spotlight. Thank you for joining us. Of course, we've got our championship game coming up 
not too long from now as it will be the Raymond Comets out of Raymond, Alberta, taking on Hansworth out of North Vancouver. Someone was saying, I haven't gone back through the records, but I guess every time that Hansworth has been here, they've won the championship. Mm -hmm. So they've never lost a game at Brit. This is their fifth trip here. That's pretty that's, impressive. That's quite a record. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of, yeah. Pressure's on these kids now, though, to keep it alive. You don't yep. want to be... You don't want to be the one who has to go back and tell Robert Sacre and yeah. the boys, oh, by the way, <laughs> we're the group that uh, killed the perfect record. <laughs> yeah, so certainly. I'm sure those guys have gotten on with their lives and don't. But anyway, yeah. still. Sacre, of course, went on to have a great career at Gonzaga and also spent significant time playing in the NBA following his appearances here at Brit, and I believe is now playing overseas somewhere? I'm not sure, that sounds that sounds very plausible though. I believe he was last year, and, okay. I, and I haven't checked on a, on what he's up to this year, but certainly lots of great memories of Robert Sacre and those Hansworth teams in the mid part of the first decade of the 2000s that came in here and put on a show each and every year. Out of the timeout, ball will stay with Leboldis. Yeah, Zach Hillis on a heat check there. It's hard to fault him though because he's nailed a bunch of those tonight where he just dribbles into him and takes takes the 30 foot three. Knotted up 41 points apiece. Weeb dribbles through, leads to the open take for Swallow. That one just a little long. Unlu there on the rebound. Tokes Ajay up ahead for Mack Bull. Back into the hands of Ajay. 5.13 to go. Here in this third place final. Losing the handle on his way through is Mazar. Picking up the loose ball, Dorn Stodder. So back comes Leboldis. Swallow thought about the shot. Now he'll look to attack. Draws contact on his way through and he'll head to the free throw line. Looks like they're gonna get Issa Rahman for it. That'll be his fourth in limited minutes. Jesse Hahn will check back in for the Bulldogs, replacing Muhammad Mazar. Ben Swallow gets set to shoot a pair, looking for his first points of the night. Getting them from the free throw line and giving his team the one point lead, under five to go. Swallow no good on the back end. Ajay there for the rebound. This is Unlu, trying to work his way through against Doran Stodder. Shot won't drop, there for the rebound, Weeb. He's had a much quieter second yeah. half than first half, not much has dropped for him. Weeb picks up the dribble, Camplin looking to attack, Unlu with good defense there. Yeah, you know, the, the Bulls coaches want a foul, but he went straight up, you know, Unlu went straight up on that, that was an excellent contest. Quick take here for Mockbull, that one no good. Good hustle by Jesse Hahn to pick up the offensive board. He's going to be called for the double dribble. Substitution for the Suns. Cade Mather back in. It'll send Ben Swallow to the bench. The boldest with the ball and the one point lead. Just over four minutes to go in this third place game. This is Weeb on the far side, back up high into the hands of Hillis. Rotating it around on the perimeter. It's going to be Weeb to put up the three-pointer. I'm not sure. Perhaps Mackbull got a finger on that, but right there to clean it up is his teammate Mather. Yeah, right place, right time on that one. Mather now up to 10 points unofficially on the night. Boldus back up to a lead of three. Nice move by Ajay, just cuts his way through. Yeah, Mather stepped up, tried to offer help, but just stood there like a pylon. And, you know, Ajay, he's athletic enough to just go around that with ease. Not much of a contest at all. Mather, a nice move on the other side, seeing some good attacking on both ends of the floor. Yeah, Mather pretty much made this exact same move. Yeah. Drove in, kind of evaded the defender who was just planted without moving his feet laterally. Only the long jumper, that'll drop. I tell you, this game sort of has these little spurts. Yeah, it Neither really does. scores at all, and then they both, boom, 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 boom. There's not our can't get the first one to go. Second chance won't drop either. Mather there for the board. He can't get it to go. 
Boldus getting lots of looks here. Finally, it's Unlu coming away with it for Churchill. Yeah, you can tell the, the difference that uh, Noah Jai down low has. Yeah. Uh, they just, they were not getting those second and third opportunities when the big man was in there underneath. One point game, chance for Churchill to get the lead here. Gonna go as an offensive foul against Ajay. Yeah, you know, I think he was in place. I'm not sure if his feet were outside the restricted area, although that's not an official thing in, in high school basketball. It's a suggestion, it's a point of reference. Oh, but, interesting. Um, but, um, you know, I think that uh, he definitely was planted. So probably a good call. Nice ball movement here, there to finish it off. Cade Mather, Mather now up to 14 points. He's off to a great fourth quarter here. And now we'll get a Churchill timeout back up to a three point lead for the Labolda Suns out of Regina. Game one of our double header. Having a lot of fun here at the pack and the pack, the pack. <laughs> Old habits die hard, <laughs> not Huskies game. A lot of fun here at Bedford Road Collegiate. Nice that even in the brisk wintry conditions, mm. it doesn't affect the temperature here. It's still, it's still oh. nice and toasty. I was gonna say it's still, you know, 90 degrees inside the Bedford gym, as always. <laughs> yeah. Kelly Bowers wouldn't have it any other way. Laboldus, of course, comes in there. One of the teams that has won back-to-back -back Brit titles in their history. They won it in 14 and 15. A strong history for them at this tournament. Certainly bronze isn't the medal they wanted to come away with, but they can hold on to this three-point lead. They will do exactly that. Certainly far from decided though, still just under two and a half minutes to go. Churchill is still led, I would guess, for the majority of this game. Laboldus has had it for a significant portion here now in the second half. Unlu up into the air. His shot's a little bit long, way up to grab the rebound, Dorn's daughter. Camplin. Now Hillis. Hillis is going to spot up for the jumper. That one bounces around a couple times and drops. Yeah, Hillis showing us a variety of shots there. That was a nice little, nice little pull-up mid-range jumper that he got to go. So we've seen everything. We've seen the three ball, we've seen the drives to the rim, and now we've seen the mid-range game. So complete offensive player today, at least for Hillis. Hillis up to 17 on the night. Macbool's shot well off the mark. Tie up there as Mather and Issa Rahman battle for the loose ball. Possession arrow favoring Laboldis. Now if you're Laboldis, you, you don't want one of those quick walk up threes. You, you want to get a good shot. First good shot you get, you take. But you also want to be a little bit mindful of, of getting, getting the clock down and, and working for a good shot. Or and Hillis will just take it straight to well, the hoop, but that, that was a good look. That is a good shot, right? Yeah. I mean, a, a layup is the best shot you can get, so. Hillis up to 19 now. Jai attacking, draws the foul. Camplin again showing a little frustration. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, the, the two biggest things, Lebold is making shots on the outside, now able to get to the rim, but, but Ajay not being under there. The big man not being under there to contest those shots has really opened up the inside for Leboldis. His cousin Tokes Ajay puts up the long distance shot. That one won't go. So now will Leboldis start thinking about taking some time off the clock? Down to 111 remaining in this third place final. Hillis in the corner, thought about putting it up, instead wisely dishes outside for Jerry Weeb. Weeb's shot won't drop, ball out of bounds back over to Churchill. Yeah, all in all a good possession though. They moved the ball around, they got, a, got the ball into the paint, kicked it back out for a wide open three, used clock, ball didn't drop, but other than that, they did everything they wanted on that possession. Sir Winston Churchill Bulldogs out of Calgary going to take a timeout, talk things over, trailing by seven, 102 to go in this third place final. And uh, with the scoring pace we've seen in this game, seven points might seem like a lot to have to overcome. But as you mentioned a few minutes ago, we've also seen some real spurts in this game. This is a team, it can score in a hurry. Yeah, it feels like this is either going to be the final score of the game or we're gonna have about 10 more points scored before <laughs> yeah, the exactly. end, right? Whichever one it's gonna be. And, and Churchill really has to hope it's the latter and they can sort of catch fire and get this thing back to a up and down game. But what they really need to do, they need to get a score and maybe extend the pressure out a little bit more. They've basically been content to stay back in the half court. 
maybe look for them to increase that that sense of urgency from from the boldest get a turnover at least get a quick shot out of them so I, i'd look for for winston churchill to try to uh to extend their pressure defense coming out of this timeout. 102 to go but they need to score first churchill inbound on the near sideline Jesse Hahn getting into the hands of Ajay. Takes Ajay, looking to attack. His path shut down. He gets it into the hands of Josefa Makbul. Makbul shot well off the mark. Yeah, you know, they, they really hedged hard on, on Ajay. They got the open look as Hillis basically double teamed Ajay. And uh, yeah, they just couldn't deliver on the, on the three point shot. And that might do it. Churchill still one foul to give before the Bulldogs would be in the bonus. And that's that's such a huge thing. I yeah. mean, if you get the ball and get a few more seconds down, you know, barring a meltdown here from the Bulldogs, it's a big uphill battle now for Winston Churchill. Unlu looking for the strip, does commit the foul. That'll send Cade Mather. End of the night for Unlu, who's just fouled out. Mather with a chance to pretty much ice things here, although free throws have been far from a sure thing tonight. Yeah, even, even with the hot streak from the three-point line, we haven't really seen an uptick in free throw shooting. Mather 0 for 2 on this trip to illustrate the point. He does have 16 points on the night. Quick take here for a Jai for three. That one rims out. Dorn's daughter comes down with the rebound, draws the quick foul from Hahn. Yeah, Dai had, had Sharif in the corner here, wide, wide open. Uh, either he didn't see him or he didn't quite trust his ability to make the three-point shot. He ended up walking into a contested three. Not a, not a high percentage look for him, really. It, it's, uh, it's desperation time for Winston Churchill. And it kind of showed in that last possession. Kaz Dorn's daughter. In his final year of play with Laboldis, hits the front end. He's up to seven points on the night. You know, I called the Huskies Regina games back in November when the University of Regina came to Saskatoon. It was interesting. You know, on both of those rosters, lots of Laboldis players. Mm -hmm. This is a school that has produced a ton of talent and looks like they're on their way to the bronze medal at Brit 52. Yeah, yeah, Churchill strong. battling, but can't get the basket to drop. And then a hard foul. Yeah, it's going to be an intentional yeah. foul, an unsportsmanlike foul. Hahn yeah. goes over and gives a pat on the back to Cade Mather, realizing he's probably a little too aggressive there. Yeah, a little frustration. It's all good. They'll shoot the free throws. They'll get the ball back in. Winston Churchill will probably back off, and we'll call this one done. Free throw made gives... Mather 17 points on the night. Great game from him. Zach Hillis leading the way with his 19 points for Regina. With the unsportsmanlike foul, it is Regina's ball out of bounds, so can just about dribble out the clock. About a one second difference between shot clock and game clock, and as you speculated, Calgary will just sort of back off now. Nice hand from the crowd. All in all, an entertaining game. Yeah, slow start in the first half. was made up for it with a really, really fun second half. 56-45, the final score. Congratulations to the Laboldis Suns on their victory. Fifty-six, forty-five. Once again, the final. The Suns come away with the bronze medal. The teams will shake hands. Good tournament as well for Sir Winston Churchill. Congratulations to them on their fourth place finish. Only one more game to go in the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament, and it's the big one for all the marbles. Championship game coming your way next on Shaw Spotlight. We'll take a break and be back with more coverage from Brit 52.
back inside Bedford Road Collegiate. Congratulations once again to the Labolda Suns out of Regina, 56-45. The final score in the third place final against Sir Winston Churchill. Sir Winston Churchill ends up coming in fourth. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from this third place final. It was kind of a weird paced game. You know, it got off to a bit of a slow scoring start and then we did see a few real big scoring spurts and uh, ended up being, uh, you know, kind of about an average scoring game in terms of uh, a Brit game. Yeah, Things it was combined for about 100 points. Yeah, no real rhythm to the game though. It was kind of, uh, kind of a brick fest, you can tell. Uh, the teams really didn't know what they wanted to get. They were trying to cram it inside in the first half and, and almost reluctant, almost afraid to shoot the ball in the second half. And then, you know, once the, the first one, it was almost like opening a top once the first one went, all of a sudden it was a flurry of threes, but not really sustainable for either side. So, you know, it was, a, it was an awkward sort of game, but, uh, you know, sometimes that's what you get with uh, with the fourth game you played in, in three days. And, and uh, in, in the end, though, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a really good second half, and, and Lavol just really took control of that game. Turning point, though, when Ajay fouled out there, yeah. it, it totally changed the complexion uh, of what Winston Churchill was and what they were able to do. Saw the basket there from Zach Hill as he ends up being the leading scorer in the game unofficially with his 19 points. Great game as well for his teammate, Cade Mather. He ends up with 16 points on the night in the 56-45 victory as Laboldus ends up in third place at Brit 52. A very different Bedford Road Invitational Tournament as we've alluded to more than once. Of course, the loss of Kelly Bowers back in September. Legendary figure all over Saskatoon sporting scene, the teaching scene, but nowhere more so than right here at Bedford Road Collegiate and in this gymnasium that now bears his name. Let's take a look now back at the life of Kelly Bowers. The noise inside this gymnasium can be deafening this time of year. But it will be somewhat quieter in 2020, as the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament's loudest voice fell silent four months ago. Kelly Biff Bowers, who passed away in September at the age of 70, was synonymous with Brit. And as preparations for the 52nd installment of the tournament ramped up this week, Members of Saskatoon's basketball community remembered him fondly. Kelly was everything about this tournament. He was the lifeblood of it. He was loud. He was eager. He was willing to do the smallest thing, whether it was uh, wiping the floor. Um, he loved getting up in front and making everyone laugh. Uh, my memories of him, he just was so supportive of me, especially like I started, I took over the coaching the senior team as a 26 year old, kind of pretty fresh face to everything. And I remember him putting his arm around me and like any little idea I had, he'd be like, yeah, that sounds great. I'll help you get it figured out. And I just remember my first memory, I don't know if it was the first time I met him, was as a ref and getting kind of upset about something and as, a, as a kid, as a player. And uh, him coming over and just making a joke or something and calming me down and something like, Lots of refs and lots of people would have been justified telling me to shut up, and that just wasn't him. He was a good ref, and he could be tough if he had to be, but that's my first memory of him of just being such a good guy. Kelly's been a big part of my life for the majority of my life because, you know, he's refing basketball games or organizing community sports, so I've known Kelly for a really long time, and so uh, just the amount that he of time and effort that he gave to not only this tournament but his other endeavors and, and kids in general is really fascinating, and we're, we're really sad to see him go, and and so this, this weekend's going to be um, obviously a little bit different, but I know he's, he's probably looking over things up there and, and keeping an eye on everything. Maybe I'll talk about something that we don't talk a lot about him, but it's just what he did as a teacher. Like, we would have kids, would, we'd look at kids' attendance, there'd be one class they go to, Mr. Bauer's class. You know, he just had a, he approached teaching and everything the way he did his sports, and we all know about him from sports because there's lots of high profile. But he was the same high energy, the same great guy with all the kids he taught. And yeah, we miss him at Brit, but I think uh, we just miss him all over the place. But just, uh, you have to be happy when you think of Kelly, because he always put a positive spin on everything. So I'm just going to have, enjoy the memories of him, but we will certainly miss him. Tributes poured in during the annual media conference and the opening ceremonies. And there are reminders of Bauer's legacy throughout the school. One will be on display for all time, 
as the gymnasium where he played, coached, refereed, and oversaw the tournament has been renamed in his honor. The quote, appropriately, is emblazoned on one of the former bleacher benches, where countless fans squished together under Biff's direction to do the Brit Shuffle. And Kelly is leaving his mark on the floor one last time, as this image of his face has been burned into the boards, where thousands of games have been played. I think they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Um, being able to see kind of the old wooden floor, so it was a piece of the floor that was taken off where they were able to kind of sand it down and then kind of have his image burnt on there. Outstanding. They've done a fantastic job here at Bedford Road to honor uh, the man that is Kelly Bowers. And, and uh, again, it, it, they couldn't have done a better job up there. It was cool. I was up hanging panels uh, about last week or so, um, and so I got that. I was really face to face with him because we were up 20 feet up in the air, and being able to just be face to face with him, yeah, it definitely it got me a little choked up. And I, I just looking at him, I'm really proud that that's what the school decided to do because, I mean, he deserves every bit of that, and he, he in his own way, he wouldn't want any of that. He just wants to work and keep going, but it, it's a nice way to remember him by. Among Kelly's many roles in the recent history of the tournament was emceeing the media conference. While he was always quick to suggest that people behind the scenes should be featured for their work, he also always stepped up and provided memorable quotes for us to use, even as reporters joked that we didn't really need a microphone to pick up his booming voice. Well, actually, I haven't missed too many Brits. I refereed, actually, in the very first Brit. Right. I was a second-year university student at the time. Of course, I was a graduate of Bedford Road Collegiate, and our team kind of was the team that went to the Luther College tournament in Regina in 67, and some teachers went down, and then two years later, they said, you know, we got to do something like this in Saskatoon uh, to kind of follow along with the idea of what the LIT was all about. So I got very involved with Brit uh, right when I was a university student and refereeing, of course, and then I started teaching in 74 and I taught here for about 15 or 16 years and uh, always been involved with basketball and uh, still continue to coach a little football here at Bedford Road so uh, I've always been part of the school and early January it's just kind of the thing you do you no matter what's on the on the planet uh, you're coming to Brit because uh, it's just been a big part of my life his love for the sport of basketball was obvious but Kelly's leadership at Brit over the past half century goes far beyond the game he took the same amount of pride in getting students at Bedford Road involved, so that it became just as much their tournament as the athletes who played here. We wanted to make sure we do everything we can to kind of make the tournament great and just honor him that way because knowing Kelly, that's what he, he wanted this tournament to keep running, everyone to have the, the most fun they could to, to be the biggest success that it has and we don't want to take anything away from that but it's, def it's definitely, it feels a little different not having him here and definitely sad to see him go but couldn't have been more couldn't have had someone who was more supportive of the tournament and someone who kind of was a great role model for me coming up in terms of building the tournament to what it is. And so, as is only appropriate when we pay tribute to one of the most legendary voices in the history of the Saskatoon sporting scene, we'll let Kelly have the last word. I think people go to Brit because they know they're probably going to see the best team from BC or maybe the best team from Manitoba, and that's always been uh, one of the main things we've tried to do, and knowing that often Saskatoon teams won't even be part of the program on the Saturday night finals. but. We still pack the place, and uh, that is one of the philosophies. And you talk about first class, uh, it just does an excellent job of getting staff involved, getting the kids to put their best foot forward, and everything they do, they do with uh, a lot of pride, a lot of enthusiasm. High school sports really is, is part of the education process. Uh, not all education takes part in the classroom. Uh, we think the athletic fields or the courts or whatever uh, is part of the education process. So, uh, you know, the high school sports are delivered in such a way that there is an emphasis on education and really it's education out of the classroom. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I think I really enjoy them. I, I just love working with young people, watching them mature and grow up. Just getting involved in uh, programs that the school has to offer, and of course athletics being part of that, but uh, generally those are some of the things that uh, contribute to somebody coming through high school and developing into a good uh, all-round person.